Hi guys, welcome. I hope you are doing well. Here we are continuing our lecture series on irrigation water management. You can follow me on Instagram or Telegram to get notifications related to our video lecture series. So in last class, we have already completed about evapotranspiration, effective rainfall, and different crop water requirement concepts. So in this chapter, we'll continue that concept and also we'll try to understand different methods used to make a major evapotranspiration and effective rainfall. Okay, so let's start it. So here the first question is a numerical problem. The question says that on a sunny day, the net solar energy received in a lake is about 15 megajoule per meter square per day. If 80% of the energy received is used to vaporize water, then what will be the depth of evaporation at 20 degrees Celsius? So before solving this problem, we should understand what is evaporation. So evaporation is nothing, but it is a process in which water is converted from liquid state to vapor state or gaseous state. And for this evaporation process, energy is needed, heat is needed, and this energy or heat is known as latent heat of vaporization. So latent heat of vaporization is the energy or heat needed for converting water from liquid form to vapor form. Then this latent heat of vaporization is not constant throughout the temperature because if temperature is higher, then less amount of heat will be needed for this vaporization process. It has been found that at 20 degrees Celsius temperature, the energy that is needed for this evaporation process is 586 calorie per gram of water. It means 586 calorie energy is needed to evaporate one gram of water. And this can also be converted into 586 kilocalorie per kg of water, kilocalorie per kg of water. Okay, similarly, at 25 degrees Celsius, it has been found that 583 calorie per gram of water is needed. Similarly, at 30 degrees Celsius, 580 calorie per gram energy is needed. So here, one thing we can mark, as temperature is increasing, the energy or the latent heat of vaporization is decreasing. This is because if temperature is already higher, then less amount of heat will be needed for evaporating water. Okay, so these three things are important in examinations. Uh, questions like, uh, it can be asked like, at 20 degrees Celsius, what is the latent heat of vaporization of water? So answer will be 586 calorie per gram. So another thing we should uh, remember that is regarding the unit of heat, so one calorie of heat is equal to four point, approximately it is 4.2 Joule. So remember, this is also a good question. One calorie is equal to 4.2 Joule. So we can convert this 586 kilocalorie per kg to Joule. And remember, one mega means it is 10 to the power six. So we can convert this into mega Joule. If you'll convert this calorie to Joule, then at 20 degrees Celsius, 2.45 megajoule energy is needed to evaporate one kg of water. Similarly, at 25 degrees Celsius, it is 2.44 megajoule per kg of water. And at similarly, at 30 degrees Celsius, it is 2.43 megajoule is required to convert one kg of water. I hope it is clear now. So in examination, if question is asking about calorie per gram, then it is 586. If it is kilocalorie per kg, then it is still 586. And if it is in megajoule per kg, then it is 2.45. So I have converted all the units. Then what will the amount of energy that is needed to evaporate one millimeter depth of water? So I will convert this. If you don't want to see the conversion, then you can skip this part. Okay. So now we'll convert this. That is 2.45 megajoule energy is needed to evaporate one kg of water. So in case of water, one kg 
is equal to 1 liter because density of water is 1 gram per cc so we know that 1 meter cube is 1000 liter so 1 liter will be 0.001 meter cube it means 1 kg is equal to 0.001 meter cube so here we can write 2.45 megajoule per instead of kg you can write 0.001 1 meter cube then we can break this meter cube to into meter square into meter so this will become 0 uh, 2.45 megajoule per 0.001 meter into 1 meter square okay this is okay so this is nothing but this is 1 millimeter so it means to evaporate 1 mm depth of water approximately 2.45 megajoule energy is needed over 1 m square surface area so this is the key point you have to remember this it means 2.45 megajoule energy is needed to evaporate point sorry 1 mm water from 1 m square surface area so now we have known that for evaporating 1 mm water 2.45 megajoule per meter square energy is needed at 20 degrees celsius it means 2.45 megajoule per meter square energy will cause 1 mm evaporation then in this question it is said that total or net in solar energy received is 15 megajoule per meter square per day so it is 15 megajoule per meter square but out of this 15 megajoule per meter square only 80% is used for the evaporation and 20% is lost so what will be the exact amount that will cause evaporation that is 50 megajoule per meter square into 80% so that is 12 megajoule per meter square so if 2.45 megajoule per meter square will cause 1 mm evaporation then 1 megajoule per meter square will cause 1 by 2.45 mm evaporation and 12 megajoule per meter square will cause 12 into 1 by 2.45 that is about 4.9 mm evaporation so this question is very simple the correct answer of this question will be 4.9 mm evaporation will be caused at 20 degree celsius so coming to the next question that is which method is not a direct method of crop evapotranspiration estimation options are lysimeter soil water depletion field experimentation and pan evaporation so from now we will discuss about different methods for estimation of evapotranspiration so broadly evapotranspiration estimation methods can be divided into two groups one is direct method another one is indirect method direct methods are those methods which directly estimate crop evapotranspiration whereas indirect methods estimate crop evapotranspiration indirectly it means it measures some parameters those are related to crop evapotranspiration then these parameters are used in empirical formula or certain equations to estimate crop evapotranspiration now we will discuss these methods one by one so the first method is lysimeter lysimeter is an efficient method for estimation of crop evapotranspiration this lysimeter the term lysimeter is derived from two greek words and those words are lysis lysis plus metron so lysis means solution and metron means measurement okay and this lysimeter is nothing but it is a device which is used under field condition suppose it is a box like device or container in which soil is filled and it is installed in the field itself but this container acts as a barrier 
or it separates the soil which is present inside this container from the rest of the field and crop is grown on this soil also okay in field also the crop is grown and also in the container or lysimetric container the crop is also grown but this soil is hydrologically separated from the rest of the field and also one extra container is there to measure the percolated water okay so lysimeter may be of two types one is weighing type lysimeter and another one is non weighing type lysimeter and in case of weighing type lysimeter it can be mechanically weighing mechanically it may be the weight may be taken mechanically or it can be weighted through a floating solution like water or zinc chloride so zinc chloride or water is used in case of floating type lysimeter but in case of mechanical weighing type of lysimeter it is just weighted mechanically so now we'll discuss how this weighing type lysimeter can measure evapotranspiration for that i would like to give a small example for example before the lockdown period your initial weight was 80 kg and after the lockdown period your final weight is 75 kg it means you have lost 5 kg weight during this lockdown period so how this weight is lost during this period you have consumed a lot of foods and also you have gained some weight like 5 kg weight you have gained but at the same time you have also done some workout to lose your weight for example you have done running plus home workout so weight loss due to running is known to you because you have used a fitness band and the weight loss due to running is 6 kg but the weight loss due to home workout is not known to you and that is what you are interested for so we can calculate the weight loss due to this home workout by considering this weight change it means you have lost 5 kg weight and this loss in does this loss in weight is due to running plus home workout minus gain in weight so running is 6 kg plus home workout is not known to you minus gain in weight is 5 so from this equation we can calculate the contribution of home workout in your weight loss program that is about 4 kg so you have lost 4 kg weight due to this home workout so similar is it is the same equation which is used in case of lysimeter in case of weighing type lysimeter the initial weight and final weight of lysimeter is taken and the change in weight is calculated and this change in weight is nothing but it is the loss in weight of lysimeter minus gain in weight of lysimeter loss in weight of lysimeter is due to evapotranspiration and percolation whereas gain in weight of lysimeter is due to irrigation water and rainfall that is occurred during this crop growing period so from this percolation water is known to us because in lysimeter i have already said one device is present one box is present just below the lysimeter that uh, store the percolating water so percolation water is known to us irrigation water quantity of irrigation water we have applied that is known to us and rainfall amount during the crop growing period is also known to us so by putting all these values we can calculate the evapotranspiration value so in this way the weighing type lysimeter measures evapotranspiration but here we, one thing we can notice that this equation does not use the contribution of soil moisture so soil moisture contribution is not used in this equation that is the reason the weighing type lysimeter cannot be used for estimation of crop evapotranspiration over a period or over a long period of time it can be used only for short period of time that is the 
that is our next question that is evapotranspiration over a short period of time that is daily or hourly evapotranspiration is measured by dash type lysimeter so it is wing type lysimeter okay another type lysimeter is the drainage type lysimeter and in drainage type lysimeter the soil moisture contribution is considered and the evapotranspiration can be estimated in drainage type lysimeter from this equation that is et equal to precipitation plus irrigation plus soil moisture contribution minus rainfall plus percolating water sorry runoff loss percolating water so it means it is the loss of water and it is the gain of water so from this we can estimate the amount of evapotranspiration from drainage type lysimeter i hope the concept of lysimeter is clear now then coming to other methods of estimation evapotranspiration so when lysimeter is not available with us we can also estimate evapotranspiration directly by field experimentation or soil water depletion method so what is field experimentation this field experimentation is used to estimate crop evapotranspiration over a season so seasonal crop water requirement or seasonal evapotranspiration and evapotranspiration is roughly equal to conjunctive use also so we can say that seasonal conjunctive use can be estimated by this field experimentation method and the formula of that is conjunctive use is equal to effective rainfall plus net irrigation plus soil moisture contribution okay so by putting all these values in this equation we can estimate the conjunctive use for a season that is seasonal conjunctive use so field experimentation method but the limitation of this method is this is only for seasonal seasonal conjunctive use calculation this cannot be used for estimation of evapotranspiration or conjunctive use at a particular point of time so another method is that is soil water depletion method so in case of soil water depletion method we can estimate evapotranspiration between two successive irrigations or at a particular point of time so here the formula of conjunctive use is moisture content at a particular time and moisture content at a time 2 divided by 100 into bulk density into effective root zone okay so we can sum we can sum this individual conjunctive use over a different period of time throughout the season and we can finally come up with the seasonal conjunctive use also so remember one thing this field experimentation method in last class we have discussed that there are three types of conjunctive use daily conjunctive use peak period conjunctive use and seasonal conjunctive use so field experimentation cannot be used for peak period conjunctive use or daily conjunctive use it is useful for only seasonal conjunctive use but soil water depletion method it can be used for estimation of daily or peak period conjunctive use so i i hope this concept is clear now then what about this pan evaporation method this pan evaporation method is an indirect method of evapotranspiration estimation this is because this pan evaporation measures the amount or quantity of evaporation from soil but using this evaporation value we can also estimate crop evapotranspiration using a formula that formula is et crop or crop evapotranspiration is pan evaporation into kc where kc is the crop coefficient so this kc varies from crops to crops within a crop also this varies from growth stages to growth stages and definitely climate will also affect this kc value then if kc value is not known to us then it is generally taken as 0.6 for summer season crops and 0.8 for winter season crops and this kc is generally estimated by lysimeters it is also an important question then a lysimeter is used for estimation of kc then how this lysimeter is used because using lysimeter we can estimate et crop or crop evapotranspiration and from pan evaporimeter we can get e pan 
So from this, we can calculate this Kc as it is the ratio between Et crop divided by E pan. Okay. So from this, we can also estimate Kc. So generally, lysimeter is used for estimation of crop coefficient. Then coming to next question, that is which evaporimeter is widely used? So the correct answer of this question is USWB Class A Pan Evaporimeter, that is United States Weather Bureau Class A Pan Evaporimeter is widely used. Then coming to the next question, that is the sunken pan evaporimeter was developed by the correct answer of this question is Sarman Dastane. So now we will compare this USWB Class A Pan Evaporimeter with the sunken pan evaporimeter. So remember one thing, when the Kc value of a evaporimeter is close to one, then this evaporimeter is more precise. And it has been found that the Kc value for class A pan evaporimeter is 0.5 to 1.3. Whereas the Kc value for sunken pan evaporimeter is 0.95 to 1.05. So definitely this value is nearer to 1. It means sunken pan evaporimeter developed by Sarma and Dastane is more precise as compared to class A pan evaporimeter. So then coming to another type of evaporimeter that is Piche atmometer. This Piche atmometer is poorly correlated with evapotranspiration and it generally gives higher value as compared to class A pan evaporimeter. So it is generally not used, but this can be used in the crop field by the farmers. So this is all about today's lecture. We'll continue this in the next class. If you like the video, don't forget to press the like button and share with your friends. Thank you for listening. Take care.